Um, so this is like breaking. Yeah. Okay. So, um, for those who don't follow Ontario news, so Doug Ford, Premier, Ontario Premier Doug Ford, the guy who leads the province, he had a press conference recently. He's a conservative dude. He's on the he's on the right leaning side. Yeah. And he he had a press conference recently, and I guess he he brought in a whole bunch of guys who work for him, guys and girls who work for him. And after the press conference was done, he, he has this five question policy. So he takes the five questions and journalists have journalists are persistent. So even after the five questions, if he hasn't cleared things up, they'll continue to ask him questions. He, he instructed his staffers to start clapping. Yeah. So while, so, while so, the people so, are trying to ask questions, while the journalists are trying to ask questions, there is this uh, and I can't remember her name uh, from City TV News. And she was filming the staffers clapping over the journalists trying to ask questions. So she got kind of in the face of some of the staffers with her camera phone and with her microphone saying, were you instructed to clap and interrupt yeah. uh, the journalists asking questions? And none of them would answer her. I think there was a guy. They just kept clapping. I heard somebody in the back say yes. I don't know if it was a staffer or if it was another reporter. Sorry, I'll silence my phone. But either way, that happened. People are calling out Doug Ford for it. So I, I just saw on Facebook... Um, and I, I don't know where this woman is from, uh, but her name's Karen Shulman Dupuy. And this is on Facebook. So she, she posted it to the public and I can access it and I'm not friends with her. So I'm guessing she wants people to yeah. know about this. Okay. So I, I guess the mayor of Inniskillen Township, uh, his name's Kevin Marriott. I, I guess he's a Doug Ford supporter, which whatever. So th this is this, this Karen woman. This is what she posted. So I aggressively called out the mayor of Inniskillen, Ontario, for being a partisan hack when he tried to deflect attention toward federal liberals regarding the fact that the government of Ontario staffers are clapping at the end of news conferences. And he privately showed me his homophobia. So she she already seems like she's left leaning, yeah. which which again is fine. I'm not trying to make. I this... mean, this isn't even a right left thing. It's just no 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 not but... respecting the press who are entitled to ask a few questions. Okay, right? so 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 I guess he supports the the current premier, and what I don't know if she supports the liberals or not, but he seems to think that. So he private messaged her on Twitter. You munch on Kathleen Wynne's carpet. I take it, like the fucking mayor. That's a mayor. The, the, the mayor of this township tweeted, you munch on Kathleen Wynn's carpet, I take it. Meaning you eat wow. Kathleen Wynn's pussy. Kathleen Wynn, for those who don't know, she was the previous premier of Ontario. Yeah. And uh, she, she's a lesbian. Yeah. And a woman. <laughs> and, I mean, uh, and, just... and, and toward the end, not very well liked either. No. Uh, but holy shit, dude. That's incredible. Like, yeah. You munch on Kathleen Wynn's carpet, I take it. Wow. Like, not even like a, you're gay for Kathleen Wynn. Like, you munch on yes. her carpet, the, like, I take it. And this was just someone from the press asking the mayor a question, and um, he I responded was, this I, way, I or know, maybe a friend or I something. I don't know if this woman is in the press or if she's just, uh, her profile says business designer, connector, well, anyway. she, whatever. But I, either either way, like... At this point, you got to know, like, anything you publish online, yeah. like, a lot of people don't realize, and they, they uh, I didn't realize it until I went to journalism school, so I don't blame people for not knowing, but, like, when you write a Facebook message or when you write a text message, just like phone to phone, or when mm -hmm. you write an email, you are a published author of that work. Yeah, there's Meaning no like, deleting it, really. Like, in the same way, like you buy like a Robert Munch book and he wrote those books and shit, like you are writing in the same way and publishing your work in the same way. Obviously, you're not like yeah. getting your work like printed, printed and like sent out to millions. Like, why? I don't know why Robert Munch was my first thing. Who doesn't love Robert Munch? He's good, right? He's great. But like, you would, and like with mayors and members of municipal councils and stuff too. And, and this was something I only learned recently as well. Like when new, 
when new councils are elected into office and mayors and deputy mayors and, and counselors, they go to like a special training session. I think they go to Toronto for like this big training session. Yeah. And it teaches you like how to conduct yourself, like how to properly run a council meeting, like what the agenda should look like and how mayor you- school. More or less. It's Basically. like elected office school. Yeah. The mayor has more responsibility because he's like the higher up. But even the mayor doesn't have too much more response. Like he doesn't have much more of a vote. Like if there's a tie, the mayor can break the tie. But otherwise, he's just like one vote mm-hmm. in the council. So like not only is this guy an elected official and should just like generally know better, but like he got sent to like mayor school where they taught him like don't tell your constituents that they eat kathleen wins pussy what could he possibly have been thinking like it's fucking crazy dude i mean not not much different though i mean this is this is close to everyone with trump tweeting yeah yeah. shit out and you're thinking how how is he possibly thinking this is okay to do this i mean and so we're kind of in a position here now in ontario Uh, they're following similar tactics i think intentionally uh, because our our new premier is a supporter of Trump, I think. Is he? Uh, Has he openly said that? Yeah, yeah, he said he wanted him to win. Okay. Not necessarily a supporter, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but yeah, no. It's like, weird, man. Uh, and then to have them following similar ta- tactics and, uh, you know, taking Ontario as being dumb yeah, in a yeah. way, the whole buck of beer thing. I mean, it's like, really? Do you the think, beer are we that dumb? Are it's interesting because it kind of it backfired. Again, for, for those who don't know, the great province of Ontario, uh, our premier campaigned he campaigned on it yeah that he would reduce beer prices to a buck and he, he announced that this week that so in ontario the lowest price you can set for beer for a can or a bottle of beer is 125 and then he reduced that to a dollar but there was nobody who had it at 125 to begin with no you can't make it for i think you can make a can for a buck sixty or something. So no one's really gonna yeah. go, well, craft, go for a craft buck. brewers were craft saying breweries anyway. that like the very cheapest they can make it is a buck sixty and they'd have to fire a bunch of staff and use the cheapest of the cheap materials. Yeah. In order to get it actually down to like a buck sixty. Like pump it full of co- corn syrup and, yeah, and yeah. shit like that. It would literally be like corn syrup yeah. and water and mm. then you stir it up and that's beer and shit. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. So he he did the whole buck of beer thing, but it seems to have backfired a little bit. Yeah. Because all I these... went to our local brewery today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sort of made the joke because he sold me his uh his brew saying like, oh, it'll be two bucks. Ha, uh-huh. ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But I you mean, bought the big can or the big bought can? Bought the big can. Yeah, yeah. Which is like seven, eight bucks? Seven bucks. Seven bucks. Yeah. 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 It's but a it's a can. liter of beer. It's yeah. Like just, it's a lot of beer. just shy of a liter of beer. <laughs> it's good beer though. But like... I don't know, but they're really just playing with our primal mind or something, yeah, aren't yeah. they? Like, I mean, that, that's not really what you're thinking about at the end of the day, is it? Unless you're an alcoholic, but you're all, thinking, how am I going to afford yeah. my beer this week? But the cool thing about these craft breweries is there's there's breweries popping up. And like, this is Godrich, Ontario, and we have a brewery and we have a population of 8,000 people. Mm-hmm. Blythe, Ontario, nearby, like they've got a, like... 1100 1200 people they have like yeah. one of the biggest craft breweries in ontario yeah like, the thing Canada, is fucking maybe. huge like yeah they employ like a tenth of the town like they employ like 100 people or something mm-hmm. like they employ a good number of people in the town bayfield they've got one grand bend's got yeah, one seaforth yeah. like all these tiny towns there's so many small breweries now that like they can speak up with a unified voice because local people will go to these businesses because like, this is like a this guys we know in the community who are running a brewery and the beer is good and they're saying we can't sell it for a buck so see a I lot love of when people are like turning this. now a lot I of people love... are turning against the government yeah saying like eh, the bucket beer isn't that appealing because we know it's going to be shit we'll still support it and there seems to be this swell now of people who are like maybe i won't buy like my molson my steam whistle my labat maybe i'll go to these local guys so it seems to have worked kind of for the local guys who aren't selling the cheap beer yeah you know, it's going to work in their favor because again everyone's sort of the, the backlash of doing something like that it's like nope i'm going to support local yeah. uh, a lot of canadians to, to um boycotting american goods yeah, yeah for the yeah. same reason these, these, oh, these tariffs God. any amount of sort of bullying like that uh it always backfires it's and bizarre, i love that dude. that just it's... means that humankind is generally uh, more nice than we yeah, realize yeah, yeah. right you know all those things that people do um i mean the bucket beer thing maybe is well intended like yeah we want to put money back into uh you know um people's pockets or whatever but i mean not good of course for the small businesses producing beer or if you don't like i buy beer twice a year dude like i don't buy much beer Mm. 
I've had a I've had a twelve pack in my fridge now for three months. Oh yeah, like I like I I'll have no, a beer every like that. month or something. But yeah, like yeah. I, I don't buy much, so it's not <laughs> saving me any money. But now I want to go buy more craft beer, just because. It's just because fuck you, Doug Ford. Yeah, and just because fuck you. But I don't know if things are getting like, I believe people are nice, but the the most bizarre part of like the political state right now is like. It's, it seems to be baby boomers, baby boomers that are that have this like weird entitled attitude. But these were the people that were like burning bras in the 70s. Yeah. This was the flower power generation. These are the people experimenting with acid and like opening up their minds. Like these were the people like the Did sex- they turn on us or what? It's, dude. What they happened? Were, they were part of the sexual revolution. Like the, the yeah. baby boomers of the 70s. My mom and my dad, like maybe not so much. My dad was in the Middle East at the time, but like my mom was here. Like and that generation was fighting for reproductive rights. And that was like the dawn of birth control and shit. And women started fucking everything and everyone because mm-hmm. they could without getting pregnant. And like, and there, this was before AIDS. So like there was all this like free love going on and it was consequence free and it was like a fucking revolution they were part of like an insane very like left-leaning revolution and now that seems to be the generation that is maybe more entitled than others or doesn't feel like younger people should have access to free college or doesn't feel like mental health initiatives are the most important thing or doesn't feel like a clean needle initiatives are the most important thing like there's this generation that like got fucking like they were the first to have birth control and like like a stronger sense of women's rights but these people are saying like fuck immigrants like people with mental health issues don't deserve like the money and the help they need because i don't have these issues well, so why should i these pay people? for your issues uh, were these the hippie people doing I don't, i'm not sure it was that generation that generation uh but i think when we look back on history we just think of the the free love, the hippie people. Yeah, yeah. But there was this whole other group. I think it's that group yeah, yeah, that yeah. grew up to be the miserable assholes that you right, know, right. They, they put down the millennials of good for good for nothing and and you know, my generation or whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there was this sort of hidden generation that uh aren't in the movies. Yeah. That yeah, grew yeah. up and we became these awful people, destroy I mean, destroyed uh, the thing that hurts me is they destroyed uh, the environment. Like what it's seventy yeah, yeah. percent of all life on earth species or whatever has been destroyed since yeah, like yeah. the seventies. I mean, this planet and stuff that's been around for uh, millions, billions of years. We, we did this in what, like 50, 60 years, yeah, like yeah. just completely decimated it and destroyed it. I mean, it's, it's absolutely mind boggling. They're going to look back at us and think, wow. I don't know that our generation, I don't know that my generation was that much better. Cause even coming up in high school, there's a, like, there's a couple of gay students in our school yeah. and they were not treated well. No, like, like no, even, I grew even, up in Huron County. I was born in '85. I grew and I grew up in the city too. I went to a city school, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I remember th- I, I was buddies with the one gay dude. He was he was my age, and he was like the friend of a friend. But we hung out a lot. You know, whatever, he was a good dude, and it didn't come up much. But I remember there was this other younger gay kid, and he was just like bullied so fucking bad. He was on yeah. my, he was on my bus going home too, and like even and I'm the millennial generation. I'm kind of an older millennial, but. We millennials kind of pride themselves on being the first kind of open-minded group, but even in high school, dude, we were assholes to some of the gay kids and shit. And like, yeah, society's it's still it's super definitely, clicky. Yeah, so definitely come a lot further. But yeah, I remember that in high school because I was, I was a bit effeminate. I yeah, was yeah. sort of that kid that got yeah. picked on. You had the nice hair too. I, I had I had yeah. beautiful hair. I liked looking pretty. Who I was were, just that kid. Yeah. Who were you modeling um, yourself after? I don't know, maybe like the glam bands of the 80s, okay. but but people in Huron County, of course, didn't know what to think of that. They yeah, just said, yeah. there's the gay kid, and uh, they'd throw gum in my hair. They would, oh, call me all kinds of names. Yeah, so yeah. I know firsthand what that feels like. Right. And, and you know. Were you I, gay? Uh, maybe I was. Like I wasn't gay. I just sucked no, a lot of I dick. No, maybe I was, yeah. <laughs> I'm a straight man who enjoys the dick. Uh, but but yeah, no, I was that kid in high school, so I know firsthand. So when I see when I see a, a gay kid being bullied, I it, it just I just well up and I yeah, start yeah, to yeah. cry. But but it, now it's so unfair. But it's now it nice seems feeling. like that's not even a thing. Like you you can hate the gay kid because he's because he's a shitty person, but you can't hate him because he's gay. Yeah, like like it like you have kids in high school. Mm-hmm. Would it? 
would it be a thing if a guy brought a guy to the prom? Like, would that be? I don't think so. No, I honestly don't think so. And this is my like, kids this is don't the country. have any, like this. My kids have city. no sense of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and and in in fact, it, it's maybe sort of the, the opposite. If they they see the gay kids, like I want to be friends with that guy because he's I cool. Be gay. Yeah, no, seriously. Where's like, my he's dick? The cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's the yeah, cool yeah. guy. That's cool, man. Yeah, kids I think cool. it's actually the opposite. In fact, my my daughter uh, attended a well, it was a music theater camp, so of course there's going to be some some gay guys there so she just I, expected I no she's like the first gay guy i see i'm gonna become friends with and she, she just couldn't wait to and then she found that person yeah really, really cool guy dude cool guy yeah yeah and her boyfriend's so much fun him. yeah like, yeah yeah you better be gay <laughs> do the i know the boyfriends <laughs> yeah like dick yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's nice so, man that's nice so yeah um sex ed's been in the news a lot because mm-hmm. again our great province is repealing the updated sex ed program. Here's my issue. I didn't get much like nutritional education in school. Right. I always learned the food pyramid. And the food pyramid is That is, was bullshit though. Are wasn't you laughing it? at us, Jeremy? Yeah. The food pyramid pyramid was bullshit. Jeremy's wasn't our it? producer. Okay, like so, the- so like dairy is complete horseshit. There's like uh, an overabundance of dairy. I, I know this is true in the States. I'm not sure if this is the case in Canada, but there's like, and that's why there's government cheese. That's why you can get government cheese because mm-hmm. there's just so much, it, would, it was subsidized so heavily, corn subsidized heavily now, that they put cheese on the on the food pyramid as like a, like make sure you have your two servings of milk or cheese every day. And it's complete horseshit because yeah. like, it's not that it's, it's not, not that, bad for you. No, dairy's not bad for you, but it's like it's heavy in calories. Like yeah. milk is designed to make baby things. Like it's designed to like give you as many calories in like protein and fat as possible. So there's like there's good shit in dairy, hmm. but as far as like cutting off like half a brick of cheese and having that every day, like it's it's a ton of calories. We'd be better off drinking human milk. Yeah. Like, should we not be making human milk? Does it taste? Did you ever try your wife's breast milk? Uh, I have tried it I'm in an indirect curious. sort of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, of course, when the kids were feeding. You'd like yeah. test the bottle milk? Yeah. That yeah. is good. It's delicious. <laughs> it's actually quite delicious. Why you kept having kids. You're like, it's sweet. I need some more, I need milk. Some more of that milk. Give me milk. <laughs> give, me, <laughs> give me the milk. <laughs> like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but but it, it, it like the more. But it's weird that we we drink a, another animal's milk, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I mean, and we think that's like that's more. We think that's more normal than drinking human milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish we could Isn't produce that, all produce our own milk. Weird. That's bizarre, right? Isn't it bizarre that like if I that's was to weird. go if I was to go suck a pregnant woman's titties, people would be like, "What the fuck are you doing, mm-hmm. dude? You're an adult." Well, but if I were to like. <laughs> If I were to suck a cow's titties, it'd still be weird, but people would be like, yeah, that's where milk comes from. It's I like, know. no, dude. It's, <laughs> it's, like, it's a bizarre pe- thing. People milk comes for people comes from people. I-, I wonder where that comes from, where we, we shame. Like, I mean, we even shame women in public who breastfeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the most natural beautiful thing yeah, to yeah. the point where like you people <laughs> are breastfeeding children yeah they're when they're, well adults. yeah when they're breastfeeding uh children like you know in a food court or something they have people complain it's like can you go in the uh the che- the the we have a special room for that and it's like are you kidding me yeah, meanwhile yeah. there's like a a dude eating a burger next to her that just looks absolutely disgusting <laughs> drinking a glass of milk yeah he's like this is yeah. breast milk well, that woman's feeding her child yeah, yeah, yeah. and that child is eating yeah, what could yeah. possibly be wrong with that? I don't get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why are people, uh, I wonder how that became such a shameful thing. It, it is bizarre. Yeah, that, it's like, the way we've sexualized each other, right? Yeah. I guess I, I, obviously but, where it but comes t- from. But tits are sexualized. But it's bullshit, like in yeah. our culture, tits are sexualized. Yeah. There's cultures where boobs aren't sexual. Mm-hmm. They're like, it's like, that's a reproductive organ. But in, in our culture, boobs are sexual. So it's, like, I get it. I, I get the shame. I don't agree with it. But like, I get that, like, when a woman pulls a titty out that like, Oh, like that's something that like I normally find hot, but she's there's, a, it's also a tool to feed the child. Right. Like, there's, so people... food, there's food in the boob. So I get that. She's like, like I wouldn't, I would never ask a woman to like find a different room, but it's definitely one of those things where when you see it happening, it's like, Oh, look the other way. Like right. you, you, you definitely avert your eyes. So there's definitely a thing. So like, I don't know if I feel that way. I'm trying to think if I feel that way. I or not. like, but maybe because I grew up around. Good for you. Uh, and my and my sisters will just feed their kids in front of me and stuff. I obviously, think nothing of it. Why are you calling the police? And I've had three kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, same. Is it weird? I don't have sisters. Is it weird when your sisters are breastfeeding around you? No. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't. I don't find it's it weird. I I always I'm constantly but that asking just goes you to about show. your kids because I'll, I'll never I, again I'll never have so I'm always I'm always curious because I don't have sisters either so I've never mm-hmm. like I've ha- had like aunts and cousins breastfeed and it's always like I'm always like looking away. Well, and I don't even think my kids find it all that unusual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If there's breastfeeding going on in the room, it just seems so bold. Why should they? It seems so bold to like just pull a tit out. Yeah, like, but well, it shouldn't be but, if you're feeding your child. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but what if you <laughs> what if you had to pull your dick out to feed your kids? Like like what if like there's so many hormones? No no hold on. There's so so many hormones in our water now. It it fucks with our DNA. Humans evolve, and now mm-hmm. men carry the babies. We develop uteri. Uter- I don't know what the <laughs> plural of uteruses is. We develop uteruses, and uh, we 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 have the kid. However, we have it. And we develop the milk through, through, our, through our balls. <laughs> but and, then but, that would just be the normal thing. But, but that's a stupid question. Or do you think, are guys so privileged that we would like find a way to make it work? Or like we would pass laws to make dick milk feeding acceptable <laughs> so that nobody could shame it? Because I feel like part of this, part of, the, part of the shame for women is that like men run the fucking world. Yeah. So there's always this like constant stigma to like if you're if you're not pleasing us in every single way, like go to the other room and f- feed your kid the absolute natural way we've been doing it for eternity. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe men like force a lot of this privilege. Sorry, I keep scratching my nose. It's well, gross. men are really terrible the way we treat women. We were just sort of talking earlier about how we expect women to look like their kids yeah, yeah, yeah. even we're like, talking about just, shaving our armpits yeah we we're talking about as guys shaving our armpits simply because from a health perspective you're not going to stink as much because yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the the main stink is actually the the hair and the bacteria that's on the hair so mm-hmm. i shave my armpits every now and then yeah, just yeah, to yeah. cut down on the smell yeah, yeah, yeah. why not yeah. but there's something something uh, about guys and that uh well the fact that we expect women to do this all the time it's a very bizarre thing we expect a lot they don't of expect women. us yeah, to yeah. do that they probably don't like the hair that's on us maybe they right do. no no i, know, I don't I know. know girls who like hairy guys i guess so yeah, yeah yeah but i don't know too many guys who like hairy girls no it's, it's a kind of a weird thing but like, it shouldn't be like if my girlfriend wanted to it's grow her leg, ha- her leg hair out it honestly it, it wouldn't bother me much like yeah i just it, it doesn't register like like she'll have like somewhat like she hasn't shaved like if she hasn't shaved for like three days and there's like the prickle right like Ouch. she'll be like don't touch it I'm like I don't I like I don't care it doesn't matter it doesn't even like register as a thing meanwhile you're if snuggling she had hairy up legs on, no I don't think that would bother me meanwhile you're snuggling up to your teddy bear beside you right yeah, yeah and yeah. that's okay it's called a fleshlight oh but w- the standards like we impress upon women is, is like when you think about it is disgusting because like in all the magazines they're all like perfect smooth and hairless like Mm -hmm. except for eyebrows and head like there's absolutely no hair on their body and they're like we expect them to be tiny like kids hairless like kids yeah look 20 years younger but we expect them to have tits and ass like adults yeah but we expect them in all other ways to look like kids, and it's fucking weird. It's like, really guy, bizarre. Like with guys, it's like encouraged. Like you have muscles, and like beards are a thing now, and mm-hmm. like nicely groomed hair and stuff. Like these are all very adult things, and that's fine. The hairless thing works for guys. Like you, you see a lot of hairless models and stuff, and that's fine. It looks fine, and most of the time they have muscle to cover it up. If if you see like a hairless like dad bod, it's bizarre yeah it looks like some kind of walrus it's or something. like a hairless bear a walrus yeah. yeah it's weird yeah but it's like like all these standards we impose on women are like fuck like yeah it's really quite bizarre and we don't I wish there was like we don't think about it too often i wish there was like a fund i could pay into to like for reparations or some shit mm-hmm. or i could just not be an asshole to women could not tell them they munch on rug well and, and it's a strong ingrained thing because the other day i i um the, my daughter doesn't really shave her armpits and mm-hmm. doesn't feel a need to disgusting and, and she yeah and there's this little part of me that's thinking like oh isn't has no one told her she's supposed to do that yeah, yeah. Uh, that thought actually will come to our heads and you're thinking well then you're thinking what the fuck like why is she supposed to do this mm. you know it's amazing the expectations that we grow up under yeah, yeah and yeah. we just impose upon ourselves yeah 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 and then do you tell your boys like to counteract that are you like you guys shave 
Yeah. Standards on you now. Yeah. No, that's the thing. That's what's yeah. so bizarre about it. I mean, why should that be a the yeah, one's got a gender hair. The one's got a thick beard, though. Yeah, he's got a nice beard. Yeah, I know. He looks. It, he's looks a the good same looking age. kid, man. Good looking kid. He looks yeah, the same yeah. age as me, though. With that beard. Does no, he? Not quite. <laughs> looks fifty-seven years old. I was yeah. talking about the food pyramid and how it's bullshit. Oh yeah. No, like that's uh, what got us on the breast milk. That's kind of what got us on the breast on milk, the body shaming. But all this dairy <laughs> shit, all this carb <sighs> shit, and I, I've learned a lot of people don't know how to like prepare food, like. I, n- I never really learned how to cook formally. I just kind of like watched my parents and c- figured it out kind of. But I, I- I'd been on a few dates uh, and I- people cooked for me. And it was like the absolute plainest yeah. like war. I think I told you about somebody made me mac and cheese and they claimed it was amazing mac and cheese. <laughs> it was like white, no- white bag noodles, which whatever. Shredded cheese yeah. and milk. And that's it. And they like, thought it was delicious. It's like no pepper, yeah. no seasoning, no breadcrumbs. Do you bring seasoning with you now when you go on, on a date? If you went on a date, would no. you? But, but before, seriously, some but, people are just, yeah. uh, people don't know how to cook. It's weird. Who does the cooking in your house? Uh, both of us. Okay. Who's yeah. the better cook? Uh, you don't uh, have to say. No, not, say. Natalie's a better cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll admit. Okay. I'm not bad. I do. I, you strike me as a I, good guy. I spice it up nice. Yeah, I, do, yeah. I do, but I, I actually go overboard with the spices. That's the big complaint in my house. Yeah, I, I just dump in the chili peppers. It's too it's too dad. hot. Yeah, it's this just too, too, too much. I like Indian, but that's I don't want my to problem. Indian. Yeah, it's like way east. I just it's want like way too east, middle Duh. east. Yeah, I always do. Your I kids. wish my kids talked like that. Yes, it would make me laugh. Like they're from Orange County. <laughs> what the fuck, Dad? Well, you imagine though if you actually did have a kid to talk like that, because there are those kind of stupid kids that be oh my god, like, oh, oh, oh. and you're thinking, oh my god, I'm so glad I don't have a kid like that. Well, I would be just like rolling my eyes. I couldn't handle it. If I had like a Kardashian kid, dude, I could. My I kids could, are intelligent. I could live with a kid who talked like an asshole. You just talk like an asshole back. Like I can deal with asshole yeah. kids. It wouldn't be fun, but like I could deal with it. What freaks me out about parenthood is like your wife's pregnant with this fucking kid, and like you're just like, like I Mm -hmm. I don't get how people can want a boy or a girl. It's like who gives a fuck? Like let the baby have all its fingers, all its toes, have a fucking brain that's intact. Like have the baby come out healthy. Who cares if it's a boy or a girl? You are ahead of the game if that baby comes out. Seriously, like with no problems. Yeah, yeah. It's an impossible situation. Babies, like mentally, they like, don't fine. come out with no problems. There's yeah, always yeah. going to be a problem. There's always something with kids, you but know. Like, and then you think they're okay, and then they go through mental illness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you're just like, oh, it's like it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and your your job as a parent's just to like make sure they survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the stress of it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And for, it's a beautiful thing as well. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. This is something you'll never know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I went through well, the social might know. anxiety. You might thing. adopt someday. Maybe, maybe. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not now. You'd be a good dad. Not now. Maybe. Maybe. You, you always think you wouldn't, but I think you would. But I went through social anxiety kind of quietly in high school. Mm-hmm. Because I, I didn't ha- really hang out with people at my high school. All my close friends went to a different school. So I'd like go to school at the one school, and then at night I'd go to the parties at the other high school. But I, I still had, like, really serious anxiety, like, talking to people and meeting new people. Most of the times, they'd be introduced to me. Yeah. Excuse me. I was in a band in high school. So a lot of people were just, like, excited to talk to me, which is nice when you have. If You're, you're in, a, in a band? If, if I was the singer, and I wasn't very good. You were the singer? Yeah. What? That, I never told you You never this. told me that? Oh, yeah. I thought you were just the bass player. No, no. No, I, I, <laughs> I've taken up bass since. But, yeah, no, I was the singer. I didn't play anything. Did you have hair point. then, too? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had hair. When did you start to lose your hair? Oh, man. Sorry, I'm sidetracking. Uh, Where were you no, going no, with the band okay. thing? No, no, that's okay. No, I started losing my hair 23, 24. It, start, oh, it, just, started, it just started It started creeping up. It you got like the thinning, island. Thinning you got the little here. island up there. Yeah, and I got then, the uh, island right here. Yeah. And then you can kind of, I shaved it you, yesterday, so you can't. You, you can can't only really comb do, over but, the island for so but long, But you can, right? like, see where it's, like, receding. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, like, the, the yeah, the valley. Um. But uh, the social anxiety thing, like that was before like parents or anybody was really like attuned to recognize like, okay, he's anxious around people. Mm -hmm. Um, And then going to journalism school kind of fixed it because I was like journalism school is like 
the absolute worst thing for anybody with social anxiety because yeah. they they tell like your 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 schoolwork is like here's a microphone go shove it in somebody's go face go talk to people go talk to absolute strangers unsolicited like nothing could be more like terrifying mm-hmm. if if you're like bad with people that's the only way to overcome it though i had social anxiety too to the yeah. point where i made a decision to intentionally put myself in positions I did not want to be yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I went from, I was that kid in, in, in high school, couldn't couldn't look at people. Like, yeah, I was that I have guy. issues with eye I couldn't contact. even yeah, look yeah, yeah, at people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, what am I so ashamed of in myself that I can't yeah, even yeah. look at people? But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of reasons for that, I guess. But, like, uh, yeah. Well, what you, got you over that? I, I think just... I don't even know, but I, but consciously deciding to put myself in situations, yeah. put myself on a stage in front of people singing, put mm-hmm. myself in a band. Because you went to theater school. Yeah. Or was, it, was it college that did yeah. it? Yeah, I think so. But, but even in college, I was still fairly socially awkward. But yeah, uh, but yeah. having a good a couple but good friends. But you were friends. also in the arts. You were also in the arts. So people are weird in the we arts. Were all, we were all fucked so up. So as long as you there, can right? like, execute, like it probably didn't matter what you were like yeah. as long as you were nice and you were like committed to the job as you're well and then there's also that power of finding you know 30 40 other people that are just like just as messed up as you right and then all of a sudden you realize oh i'm not messed up i was just messed up based on who i was comparing myself to yeah yeah that's the beauty of college and you grew up in the country too yeah you get out there and realize oh okay I'm, i'm not just this weirdo i'm actually quite normal but just wasn't normal in my own setting kind yeah, of thing, yeah. right? Oh, it's like a movie. Right? That's that's really what it's all about. I don't realize and we, I always we tell both, my yeah. kids that cuz sometimes my kids feel like, "Oh, I just don't belong in in here in county," you know, yeah, like yeah. the other thing. It's just like you, you try and convince them like, "No, you'll find your people. You'll find your tribe. They mm-hmm. are out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. you just haven't met them yet." Yeah, yeah. Which is a hard thing to sell, but they no, will it is. It well, is. they will see that. And it's that. one of those things where you, you Yeah. Like, do you find that with your kids too? There's just like so many lessons you want to impart, but it's just like, you gotta, you have to live it. You have to experience like my mom, Mm -hmm. my mom growing up, like all, all the time growing up and cartoons and movies all say like money doesn't buy happiness. You hear that shit all the time. And like, it's, it's a nice, easy lesson to understand, but like you don't, it it doesn't sink in until you have a job you fucking. And I had a job working at a university and I I won't get into it too much. It was just not for me. They sold it as one thing, but it wasn't. It's not their fault. Like universities are super old institutions. They're like almost like hospitals or the government where it's like Mm -hmm. there's a set way of doing things. There's a structure and this is how we do things. Where in journalism school, it was like, is there a story? Go get the story and write it up and get it on the air as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. There's like an expediency. Or in university, like you have meetings and then things get approved and then you have to like there's just a process and it takes a long time and they were paying me really good Like mm-hmm. universities pay hospitals government they pay so this job paid and it paid well more than i'll probably ever make in my life realistically right. and, I was, and i and i was just out of college yeah. and i was like crying every day lost like 30 pounds dude wow. I, was, I was eating an apple a day didn't have breakfast because i was sick to my stomach because i had to go to work a job i hated <laughs> i'd have an apple at lunch i'd go to the cafeteria buy like an 89 cent apple that was like my meal for the day and my girlfriend at the time like she was working a job she hated lived in a place she hated i was miserable so we'd both just like yell at each other and cry uh. at each other every fucking oh it's brutal dude a lot of people live this way right but, but it was the best lesson i ever learned because they were paying me like crazy and like gr- like my old school lebanese dad like money's status in that culture mm-hmm. so i always learned like if you're making money you're doing good and i was making yeah. money but i wasn't doing good i don't think the new generation's falling for this the same i know my kids kids aren't i, I stayed in a, a job i didn't like for about 20 years mm. and i was just i was sad and didn't realize it till i actually broke broke out of it um was that the grocery store job yeah were you yeah. there for 20 years yeah at least i mean i just sort of did what i had to do to, to keep food on the table i thought you were there for like six years no while i raised my kids no like overall i mean i did other things on the side that made yeah. me happy like uh you know singing songwriting and uh you know being in a band and stuff like yeah. that right and uh develop my craft on the side so that sort of kept me happy so then you just sort of did this eight hours thing just for the money, just to keep food on the table for a while and just to keep living the, the small town life 
or whatever. But stealing I, produce and shit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just stealing stuff. <laughs> oh, I dropped uh, this apple. All the old, oh, oh, it's I dropped damaged. these other twelve apples too. I can't sell it now. It's yeah. damaged. I'll have to take it home. Yeah, but yeah, so it was good for reasons like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but the, where was there I going? Been with like this? skids of food or something. Uh, but that, it's like, to the point you have to throw. Don't legally in grocery stores if like there's a skid of something and it like tips over, but only like a few things are damaged. Don't you like b- by law or by liability have to like toss the whole thing or something? Yeah, you're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to imagine it's an inside thing though, where like staff are like, oh, like I could use a crate of alfagetti for yeah. my picky ass kids who will yeah. only eat alfagetti. <laughs> Like, I imagine, like, that's a thing that's, like... Uh, the worst is when you have people in the store do that. Yeah. Uh, we, we used to catch this woman who would, like, take a loaf of bread, think no one was watching her, step on the loaf of bread, and then come up and say, oh, can I have shit. this for half the price? Because it, it's clearly damaged. <laughs> so, no. You'd see her do it? <laughs> yeah, you'd see her do it. It's just like, oh, Did you end up banning me? her? Did she get banned? Yeah, yeah, oh eventually. It was like, okay, we, we understand that's your game. Cool. That's blatant shit. Um, so what was they getting at? No, it's to the point where, I mean, it's just like, I think this new generation generation coming up um they don't think they need the big house they don't think they need all the stuff and i always tell my kids that like you need very little to be happy and if you can possibly make a living just enough to get by you can grow your own food whatever this whole movement i think is actually quite beautiful and i think it's what's possibly going to save humanity is is the the need for all the stuff has to go it's a it's yeah. completely not sustainable yeah, yeah. So i always tell my kids i mean you, you know small house um do what you love if you can make money doing what you love and get by and and have enough to get by i mean that's happiness it really is instead mm-hmm. of chasing the chasing the dream for all the stuff yeah, yeah. i mean it's kind of nice but uh I don't know. I don't think it's going to make people happy long term. Yeah, they all. The, it also, just doesn't. Also, like your kids' generation, their parents, meaning you, and I, I guess like people like me, we were we were fed we were fed the lie. Yeah. Like, when, before I went to college, I met with a college counselor, and she told me, like almost word for word, you can get a job anywhere as long as you have a degree. It could be a degree in basket weaving. As long as you have mm-hmm. a degree, anywhere will hire you, which might have been the world before I entered the workforce. It's bullshit, though, isn't it? And it was, I remember she mentioned basket weaving. So I was like, that's unusual. Basket weaving? Yeah, she mentioned basket weaving. So I went and got So I went and went, took the University so took of Basket yeah, Weaving. I took English, which oh, is more, basically more useless than basket, basket weaving. Basket weaving is useful. For you words. Have, you have a basket where, English degree, you have a sonnet. It's sort of a basket weaving of sorts, weaving words together. Yes. Into a story. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. No, you're totally right. But <laughs> but we were fed the lie that it's like, oh, like just go get a degree and like you can do whatever you want. That's what I was told anyways. Yeah. And then I entered the workforce. Uh, when did I enter the workforce? 2011. So three years after the massive financial collapse when every industry in the world started downsizing and mm. nobody was fucking hiring. So we started ha- my we meaning my generation started having kids and i think like your kids were the first generation that weren't fed the lie that yeah. were like like make sure you they do couldn't it. yeah they couldn't lie to you them. you can't afford just, to lie to your kids uh, you, you won't afford to buy a house you probably mm. won't get a job in this i mean it was actually the reality right mm. or is the reality yeah uh, you'll be working in a grocery store it's miserable <laughs> Dealing with bitches uh, stepping on bread. Mind you, I mean, so I much good bread wasted. That's the key. I mean, is a lot of people do find themselves in those jobs. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's inevitable that probably ninety percent of us work in those. And jobs. there's a lot of pride to be had in those. Like and the, that's like fine. those people work. It is hard. fine. Retail workers work hard, dude. And the key is, I didn't even notice that the, the the job itself made me unhappy because while I was doing the job, I was doing the creative stuff in my head. Yeah. Yeah. While I was trimming lettuce, You're I was writing, writing songs, songs. about romaine. <laughs> right, and I mean, I think that's the key to any job because it's inevitable. We're all going to be doing jobs that we don't like simply because this world still revolves around money. I hope mm-hmm. it doesn't always revolve around around money, but uh, it's inevitable. And so, I mean, the key is to have those other things going on in your head mm-hmm. while you're doing it, and you know, doing the stuff that means something to you yeah, at yeah. the same time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's key, obviously. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough because like I like I haven't wor- I haven't re- really didn't work much retail, but I, I, dude, I worked kind of three months in retail. I worked at the movie theater for three mm-hmm. months before they fired me. Yeah, and that was enough to make me realize like people who are working behind a cash like it's tough. Oh, 
It's, it's tough. tough. There's a lot, but it, it's not tough because the work is necessarily tough. It's tough because customers are tough. Yeah. Like it's tough because you get like entitled assholes who are coming in. It's, it's like stepping on bread or at the movie theater. Like mm. why are your popcorn prices so high? It's like, bitch, I'm 15. I'm just working like, here and I'm know. 15. Yeah. And then I heard another guy joke that like, uh, he told somebody, uh, oh, the prices are high because we knew you were coming. Ha, ha, ha. Uh-huh. So I used that line on this couple once. It's like, oh, we knew you were coming. Ha, ha, ha. Fatty to the like, office. Fatty to the to office. <laughs> Let me speak to your manager. They wanted the fucking manager. <laughs> so I go get the manager, and the manager deals. I think he gave him popcorn or something. And he, he approached me. I was like, don't. don't I try that. and be so nice to people in retail because yeah. I, I, you know what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, I think yeah. everyone should have that opportunity yeah, to yeah. work in it. And, and See, it, Seriously. Like, everybody should work in it knowing, like, I remember, You're not going to be in this forever, but just so you know what it's like. <laughs> I remember a time, um, well, two different times. Someone yelled at me about something once. Just that those people just feel like they, the, the bananas were green or something. Yeah. Like, give me a break. Yeah, yeah. I actually went to the back and cried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cried um, for that. But then also you get those other people very rarely compliment you on the work you're doing and yeah, thank yeah. you and this and that and actually give you a compliment yeah yeah and you and and then i went back and cried as well yeah it was such a rare, <laughs> you're just having an emotional week <laughs> it was such a rare thing and then my boss said hello oh, you to gotta me, respect. and then i went back and i cried and- i mean everyone's dealing with shit right i mean i wish i wish everyone had that in their head that okay every single person you meet today is dealing with shit yeah yeah so treat them nice mm. uh, you know that's a good thing to have in your head yeah yeah, yeah. But it's bizarre how how often that's not the case. Yeah. How often people are just like happy to complain. Why? Why do we do this? What what do we get out of that? Do we get anything out of that? Um, not oh, so, really. Sorry, I bumped the mic, Jeremy. I hope that didn't make noise. Uh, years ago, <laughs> I was trying to sell. My, like my brother had this like tiny TV. It was like a twelve inch or thirteen inch or something. Like the old style TVs you would just keep in your bedroom. Yeah. Like near your bed because it was so small. And I was trying to just like get rid of it, give it, it worked fine, but I was trying to give it away. And I, I realized, so I put it up on Kijiji and if I listed it as free, people would like be like, Oh, can you drop it off for me? I had a lot of people being like, can you drop it off? Yeah. Or does it come with a remote or like really like being picky about it? Yeah. Free I was, means like, picky. I was like, like, what is going on? Like, Do you have pets? Yeah. Like, it, like just people being like, not cool about this like thing I'm trying to give you that works great. This is kind of before like the the big rise of flat screen TVs and stuff. So I posted it for ten dollars, and I got a lot of people emailing, can you saying, can you take five dollars? I'll come pick it up right now. Like I, it turned quick when I listed it for for ten bucks and sold it for five. And the people were better to you. And the people were amazing. Yeah. And like it turned over in a day. It was fast. But the people who I was trying to give it to were complete douchebags about it. Yeah. Complete douchebags about it. Oh, now you do anything for free. It's so bizarre, dude. I mean, I think it has maybe something to do with that whole uh, poverty mentality, Mm -hmm. the victim mentality, generally, generally the free people, free, free, free. Um, uh, They feel like victims. And maybe free jumps out to them more. And then there's something about that victim mentality that that keeps you down is it a vic- it's like an, uh, it's like an entitlement it's there's like an entitlement there's an like anger with fucked. it too there was a festival and in that's London. sort of why you're you're kept there too in a lot of ways i mean there's a lot of good yeah. people in those situations as yeah, well yeah, but yeah. there is definitely something to do that i've i've battled with that sometimes i mean it, like not yeah when, when, when something's free it's easy to think like oh i'm i'm it's free so i'm going to have that like mm. they're giving it away so it's mine like I remember a while ago, there's this ice cream company in London and they were at this one festival giving away like a, a tiny ice cream cone, free ice cream cone to mm. everybody who came or like the, I don't know, until they ran out and they're mass, so massive lineup and it was a hot summer day. So people wanted their ice cream, which fair enough, they ran out and a lot of people were like, this is fucking bullshit. Because like, they ran out. Oh, I've been waiting yeah. for two hours. Like, <laughs> mad <laughs> that they didn't get their free shit. That was, like, never guaranteed to them. That was, like, I know. given out of the goodness of that this uh, company, like, lost money on. Yeah. People were like, fuck this. We're going, taking our business elsewhere. Your, like, you weren't business? going to come in anyway yeah. unless it was for free. Oh, it's crazy, dude. Well, we had this happen yesterday uh, where, where we work. Yeah. Where... Uh, 
What? There's only one ticket? Yeah, I we won? were giving away <laughs> through a phone conversation. Yeah. We work in radio. Yeah. And someone came back in the next day and complained about the one free ticket they got that the one wasn't two. Yeah. I should have two. It should come in pairs. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't you just be thankful for the one? And be happy Where's for the, the one. Where's the gratitude? And it was for an it was, it was for an expensive thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was about yeah. like seventy dollar ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for we're a big event, seventy bucks, and yeah. they're like, "Should save me a hundred and forty dollars." <laughs> yeah, I know. so bizarre, man. Oh, wow. so bizarre. Jeremy, how long are we at? I think we're probably done chatting. What? Are, how long are we at? Forty five minutes. We did it, buddy. We chatted. Yeah. We chatted. We covered it all. And I mean, if anyone ever listens to this, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Hope you get man. something out of it. Yeah. We just really uh, like chatting to each other. So we yes, just we do. sit here, chat to each other. Like looking at It's your actually our job to chat to each other. Green eyes. This is what we do. Our yeah, day yeah. job is chatting to each other. And we chat so much off the microphone that we figured like we might as well record that. Make some sweet cash. We're getting rich off this, by the oh, way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm Two people listen to our podcast. Oh seven Mazda. We no, three. There's you, me, and Jeremy. <laughs> and then, oh, the guy over here is gone. And the There's girl no one over here. there is gone. Everybody, everybody fucking left. Well, thanks to Full Pop Studios for having us. We, yeah, we're, we're here at Full Pop Train Station. We record this at Full Pop Studios. The quality is amazing because Full Pop. Full Pop's the, the best. They're, they're the real deal. They're the real deal. Yeah, like and we uh, could never afford this shit. No. Like, no. I can't even afford this table. No, seriously. Or this mug. You you can afford the beer in the mug. I can afford though. the beer in the mug. You're drinking a beer. So I'm sporting our local brewery. There you go. I should do the same. I just don't drink beer too often. But yeah. next time I buy beer, I'm gonna go All right. to our local brewery and get it. So well, that's it's been it. great to chat with you, Fatty. That's it. Do we look into the camera to say goodbye? Bye. Sure. Bye. 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 We're Matt and Fatty. Yes. That's Matt. I'm Fatty. Uh.